Welcome back. I'm here with Simon Rich, author and creator of the TV series Man Seeking Woman and Miracle Workers. His latest collection of short stories, Hits and Misses, is a hit in my opinion, and it's out now. Welcome. Thank you for coming to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Great to be here. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, I want to start with the short story. You wrote a short story from the point of view of Paul Revere's horse. Yes, it's a bitter tell-all celebrity memoir uh, from <laughs> the horse's point of view. Um, Paul Revere, of course, most famous for his famous Midnight Ride, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, where he said the British are coming and it was this big deal. Uh, but his horse, Otzi the horse, feels rightly that he maybe deserves more of the credit for the ride since he's the one who physically did all of the riding. He put in the exertion yeah. and he doesn't get all of the attention. And then in the end, Paul just kind of yelled a thing <laughs> uh, and OC got turned into glue. So he has, a, he has his own perspective on, on what happened. <laughs> on, on how he feels about it. Yeah. Do your ideas always come with that kind of like absurdist twist? Yeah, I always, um, I always, my strategy is always to tell like an old story uh, in a new way. Mm. So like, uh, I have a story called Unprotected, which is about a teenage boy who's trying to lose his virginity, which is a very old story that's been told in hundreds of movies and sitcom episodes. But that story is told from the point of view of a condom living inside of the teenage boy's wallet as he waits and waits and waits to be used as the months tick by and turn into years. Uh, and so it's a coming of age story for this, the condom and not the boy. <laughs> not the boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I'm getting very old. Um, I, did, I, did, I wanna ask, you because you just brought up sitcoms yourself, like you, you've you written so many great short stories, you've written books. Thank you. Uh, you also write TV episodes, movie scripts. Is there any different approach you have when writing these things? Yeah, I mean, every medium gives you uh, different opportunities, I think like, Obviously, with TV and film, the, the biggest advantage is that you have the variable of actors, which can make something a, a whole lot better. Uh, if you're going to have, you know, Dracula talking, it'd be nice if you can get, like, Bill Hader to do a Dracula voice. That's going to take it to a higher level than just uh -huh. words on the page. But there's also uh, something about prose that lets you uh, do certain things you can't do on the screen, like, mm. you know, a story from the point of view of a talking horse. Uh, Mr. Ed, you know, it, it's it, it's like it, we've improved on Mr. Ed, mm -hmm. but any kind of talking animal on the screen, it's going to sort of take you out of the reality. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But if I just say to the reader, imagine a talking horse, the reader kind of meets me halfway and, and goes there. Mm. And it can be kind of realistic in a way it never would be on the screen. The, the brain can kind of do that. Yeah. Uh, another a, a theme kind of throughout a lot of these stories I felt like was aging yeah. and getting older. Yes. Um, almost to this point where I was like, are you okay, Simon? Because, man, you're only 34, right? Mm -hmm. And you've accomplished so much. Do you, do you feel like you're a little obsessed with like looking back at your life? Why, why is aging so important to you right now? Um, I think it's just because I just had a kid. And so it's mm. very much on my mind that there's a, a new generation that is uh, coming up and taking the reins. And uh, there's a story in, uh, in, in Hits and Misses about a, a struggling writer and uh, his wife is pregnant and they do a sonogram and they see uh, a penis so they know okay it's a boy mm -hmm. uh, and then they see a pencil and the doctor explains that they're gonna have a writer <laughs> and uh, the father becomes increasingly upset because in every sonogram we realize this unborn fetus is working on like the great American novel and it's this masterpiece <laughs> and uh, his own novel is going poorly <laughs> and it's about his you know competition with uh, with his unborn child. With his unborn child. Yeah. Do you feel that? Do you? Because you you also there's the Simon Rich character, right? And, right. And you're just like, kind of this spoiled writer that's had everything handed to them. Is yeah. there like, are you? I feel like you're beating up on yourself a little bit there. Is that like a character to you, or is that a self evaluation? I mean, it's it's not to it, it you know. It, it's 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 hard not to have a little bit of guilt and uh, and shame when you write jokes for a living. It's you know it's such a I'm so grateful to get to do it and uh, you know it's it's a, it's an enormous privilege and I, I uh, but yeah of course it's, it's you know you're not exactly uh, saving the world. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to be a little hard on yourself. Yeah, I mean you, I have like one story called Sellout that's from the point of view of my great great-grandfather Herschel, mm -hmm. who was this hard scrabble immigrant, uh, a Jew from Eastern Europe who fled the Cossacks and came to this country with pennies in his pocket. And then the story, this next part is fictional, 
uh, he falls into a pickle vat at the factory where he works, and he's brined for a hundred years uh, and preserved. Uh -huh. and then he emerges a hundred years later in contemporary Brooklyn, and he meets his great great grandson, me, a joke writer, and he is completely disgusted and horrified by the, the privileged uh, uh, way in which I live my life. And, you know, I'm, I'm, when my internet is slow, I'm cursing the god that brought, him for, brought his people <laughs> forth from Egypt, you know. Uh, and so I think it's just important to uh, have a little bit of perspective about, about the you know, context. I do almost want to say to you, though, I think your great-great-grandfather, if he did fall into a pickle vet yeah. and was uh, saved, into, I think he'd have some love for you, too. I, just, uh, I, you. I, do, I appreciate I do, it. I do want to say that. Another theme in, uh, in a lot of these stories are artists who kind of have to let go of their dream. Yeah. Who, who, who aren't able to do the thing that they were maybe hoping to do. Um, yeah. is, is, is that uh, something that you feel? Are you seeing it in some of your friends, maybe? Mm -hmm. uh, do you maybe think art is a little less important to you now that you're a father, as it used mm -hmm. to be? Or? Right, right. Um, good question. Uh, I mean, I'd, I love making art, obviously. I've devoted my, my, my life to it. Yeah. And uh, it's still my favorite thing to do, is, is to write every single day. Uh, and uh, I think when you get older, uh, in any job, you start, start to kind of realize your strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, uh, there's, there's some power to that, because you're like, oh, I know how to write this kind of story. But there's also a sort of sense of loss. Like, I remember when I was in college, uh, I would sometimes try to write a detective story, mm. or I'd try to write you know, science fiction or horror. And now I don't really attempt those other genres anymore. I don't take those big swings. You just get a little narrower, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a good it's a good thing. But there's also uh, some loss associated with it. Do you kind of, do you something? Do you want to? Do you want to maybe take a crack at at something out of your comfort zone? Uh, nah. <laughs> You're like I'm good yeah, at what I do. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick with that. I'll stick, stick with this one gimmick. Speaking I think. of being good at what you've done, you've written for SNL. You've written for Pixar. You have accomplished all of these things that so many people, especially comedian writers, it's what they aspire to do. Is there anything like kind of behind the scenes or shocking or disappointing for you, like stories you'd want to share uh, with with folks who maybe are like, oh, that's the golden ring, and then when you get there, it's maybe not what it was cut out to be. I, I mean, it's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, at, at its at its best. You get, you're writing with your friends. Mm -hmm. That's really, especially with television. That's that's what it's all about. Um, is you're in a room with with very funny people, and you're learning lessons, and you're learning about how to get better at writing from them, mm -hmm. and uh, it's thrilling. And and I think uh, um, so much of what I know about writing books, I learned in television writers' rooms mm -hmm. from uh, you know working uh, with and and for excellent writers. Uh, could you just shout out who are some people that you feel like you've really learned from, whether they be friends or sure. mentors? Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I got to SNL, uh, the head writers were Paul Appel. Um, and she's like one of the funniest people, uh, you know, of the last 50 years in show business. And and Seth Meyers uh -huh. were my bosses. And you could literally write a sketch and you take it to them, and they'd always read it immediately, and they'd uh, tell you what was working and, and and what was wrong and and how to fix it. And uh, it, it was invaluable. It was invaluable. Um, you're also, I know, you're turning uh, your novel in God's name one, in, yeah. into a TV. Yeah, one of your novels in God's name uh, into a TV show, Miracle Workers, yeah. right? Um, what, uh, it's going to take place in the afterlife? Yes. And what can we expect from it? So Steve Buscemi plays God. Oh, so you've got casting going. You oh, are yeah. cooking. Oh, okay. yeah, we're shooting. All right. And he, uh, he's, he plays God as the, so he's the CEO of Heaven, Inc., uh -huh. which is the uh, gigantic, mismanaged, uh, inefficient <laughs> company in the sky that runs Earth. Uh -huh. And it's like it's a nightmare. It's like, you know, budget cuts and uh, obsolete equipment, and everything is dusty and grimy. And so he, uh, and he's got an inbox full of uh, unanswered prayers that are so like screwed up, he can't even like bear to look at them. No and organization. It's a nightmare. And so he just decides in the first episode uh, that he's going to uh, retire and pursue his, his new dream, which is to open up a restaurant. Oh, God's going to open up a yeah, restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'm super excited. I'm sorry. I love Steve Buscemi. So that sounds... He's, the, he's great in the show. I can't wait for people to see him on it. He's absolutely yeah. wonderful. I can't wait. All right, man. Well, listen, thank you, Simon. Thanks so really much. appreciate you coming Thanks for on. Having me. Hits and Misses is available now. I really recommend it. Don't take my word for it. Conan O'Brien says Simon Rich is a comedic godsend.